When Kara opened her mom's coffin to say goodbye, she discovered something horrifying. But what's even more shocking is the secret she discovered a few years after her mother's burial. Kara's childhood was marked by sorrow and pain. While her peers eagerly looked forward to going home after school, Kara dreaded it. At such a tender age, she couldn't comprehend why her parents, Helen and John, constantly engaged in fierce arguments that seemed to be fueled by pure hatred. Kara held on to the memories of a time when everything was beautiful, but it all changed abruptly after her fifth birthday. Suddenly, her mother began locking her up in a room whenever her father was due to return from work. The little girl also noticed her mother's tear-filled eyes whenever John's arrival drew near, and it deeply troubled her. However, what she dreaded the most were the anguished cries and piercing screams she heard coming from her parents' room every midnight. As a result, Kara sought solace in being away from home. She found refuge at her grandmother's place and sought comfort in the company of her schoolmate Lily, who happened to live next door. One night, as Kara was eight years old, her mother forgot to lock the door after kissing her goodnight. So Kara decided to seize the opportunity and put an end to her parents' constant fights. A few minutes after her mother left the room, Kara quietly opened the door, tiptoed into the living room, and hid behind the curtain. By 8 p.m., on the dot, something terrifying happened. The front door suddenly burst open, and the man came in. He looked really strange and unkempt, and it took a few seconds before Kara realized it was her dad. He was not his usual self. His eyes were bloodshot red, his hair was disheveled, and he had a bottle in his hand. He couldn't even walk properly. From where she hid, Kara heard how her parents exchanged terrible words with each other. You're no longer the man I married. Ever since you started gambling, you have become crazy. Why won't you just stop gambling? Helen screamed. As her mother spoke, Kara noticed that her dad began to boil with anger, and before she knew it, he began to hit Helen. At that moment, Kara ran out of her hiding place and screamed, Mom, Dad, stop fighting. John then pushed Helen away and stormed off into his bedroom. After Kara witnessed this incident, Helen decided it was safer for her daughter to stay with her mother Emma for a while. Before leaving for her grandma's house, Kara tearfully begged her mother to come with her, scared that her dad would hurt her, but Helen promised that everything would be fine. Little did Kara know that John had threatened to take her mother's life if she dared to leave him. So Helen was a prisoner in her own house. Grandma Emma lived in a small town outside the city, and Kara found the little town peaceful, yet she still missed her mother dearly. Three months later, Kara and her grandmother were at the dining table when Grandma Emma's phone suddenly rang. As soon as she answered the call, her face turned pale, and she let out a scream. Tears streamed down her cheeks as she received devastating news. The next day, Grandma Emma told Kara that they had to travel to her parents' house for a funeral. Kara's heart sank, fearing the worst. When they got home, Kara was taken into her room, where her grandma and relatives broke the terrible news to her. Helen had suddenly fallen ill and passed away, without any warning signs. It was a very big shock for Kara as she struggled to understand how her mother, who was young and healthy, could suddenly pass away. Meanwhile, John began the funeral arrangements. On the day of the funeral, Kara's extended family and a few neighbors gathered to mourn Helen. The loss of her mother left Kara feeling lonely and overwhelmed, and it was hard to imagine life without her. Amid her deep sorrow and confusion, Kara desperately wanted a chance to say a final goodbye to her dear mother. She wanted to see her mom's face and hold her hands one last time. So Kara went to her father to ask him to open her mom's casket so that she could say goodbye. But instead of granting her request, her father told her to be quiet. But Kara stood her ground. She told her dad that she would never forgive him if he didn't let her see her mother one last time. Reluctantly, John finally gave in to the pressure and agreed to take Kara closer to the casket so she could say a final goodbye to her mother. But he refused to open it, telling Kara that it would be much too hard for her. As father and daughter approached the casket, Kara's heart pounded in her chest. 
She couldn't help but notice her father's hands were trembling. Suddenly, Kara let go of her father's hand and rushed forward to open up the casket. She needed to see her mother one last time. With a mixture of anticipation and fear, Kara looked inside to see what lay within. But the face that greeted her was not her mother's. It was a total stranger, a woman she had never seen before. Kara's mother was very pale in complexion, but the person in the casket was dark-skinned. The shock of this horrifying discovery paralyzed Kara for a moment, and then she screamed at the top of her lungs. John quickly closed the casket, trying to conceal the truth. Kara, still screaming, turned to her father, seeking an explanation, but he simply hushed her with a stern and intimidating look. Meanwhile, the rest of the attendees watched with concern, filled with sympathy for Kara's anguish. They all believed that the shock of seeing her mother dead was what made Kara scream so loudly. None of them understood what was truly happening. From that moment on, Kara's life changed forever. She continued to live with her grandma, but no matter how hard Grandma Emma tried, she couldn't fill the void that Helen's death left in Kara's heart. The years passed by, but her mother's memory never faded. It stayed etched in her mind, and she knew in her soul that something was not right about her mother's death. She was determined to uncover the truth behind her mother's mysterious death. Ten years later, Kara graduated from high school and began working as a secretary in a mental hospital while awaiting college admission. By then, Kara still struggled to accept her mom's death. Who was the woman in the coffin? Why was someone else in the coffin? And where was her mother? Kara was determined to find answers to these questions, and her quest for truth would lead her to discover something truly horrible. One day, as Kara went through the wards, one of the mental patients sighted her and suddenly screamed. Startled, Kara fled the scene. The next day, a nurse informed Kara that the woman had been asking about her. She explained that the woman had been brought into their care many years ago, and she had no memory of her past. She didn't even know her name. Kara felt pity for the woman, but she wasn't interested in getting closer to her until something unbelievable happened. One day, the nurses showed Kara a drawing the woman had made. It was a drawing of Kara as a child, dressed in a flowery dress with her head styled into a ponytail. Kara recognized the picture right away. The flowery gown was the one she was wearing the day Helen took her to stay with Grandma Emma. Kara was so shocked because the picture looked exactly like her. How did this strange woman know what she looked like when she was a child? Could this be her supposedly dead mother? Kara wondered, but she was too frightened to face the truth. She was scared that if the woman turned out not to be her mother, then she would be deeply hurt. So she decided not to investigate. As the days passed, the strange woman continued drawing more pictures of Kara. Eventually, the nurses became convinced that Kara was from the woman's past, so they advised her to take a DNA test to see if they were related. By then, Kara had also become desperate for the truth. Moreover, she had a strong feeling that the strange woman, even though she couldn't recognize her, could be her mother. Kara took a leap of faith and went ahead with the DNA test. Within a week, the results came out and it shocked everyone. Kara and the woman were a perfect match. The woman turned out to be Helen, Kara's mother. So how did she end up in a mental home? Kara herself discovered the horrible truth after her mother began to recover. You see, after the DNA test results confirmed that the woman was Kara's mother, Kara began spending more time with her. The moments mother and daughter spent together helped to heal Helen's body and mind. So she gradually regained her memory, and then she revealed the truth that had been buried for so long. John had come home drunk one day after losing a large sum of money. He had asked Helen for some money and then she had refused. So out of anger, he had struck her on her head with a huge object and Helen had fallen to the ground unconscious. Thinking he had killed her, John had fled the house but when he returned, Helen was nowhere to be found. She had also fled the house but the impact of the object on her head left her with a traumatic brain injury that resulted in memory loss. She started walking around the street aimlessly and gradually began losing her mind. She ended up in the mental facility when a group of mental health workers found her. 
with the truth exposed, Kara got her father, whom she had cut ties with a long time ago, arrested and he was sentenced to prison for his crime. Helen eventually left the psychiatric hospital. She moved in with her daughter and her mother, and the three of them began to mend their broken hearts together. What do you think about Kara and her mother's reunion? Thank you for watching and see you next time.